like what I see coming out of FF. They've definitely, without a doubt, got a tightly knit squad. You know, they remind me like of the Chicago Bulls. It's like everyone on on their squad has got a talent or a skill that they're bringing to the table. We the men with the staff. Everywhere we go, you've seen it. You see it in the books, in the mags. You see all that shit. I went to Berlin. Everybody's writing like TQ. He went all over the place, and everywhere he went, they're all writing like Sess. I mean, you know, that goes to tell you something, man. You know, kids know where the style is at. The FX crew, artists that um, like old friends that just got together and formed uh, like a big um, movement, you know. Now we have people from Germany, all over um, Puerto Rico, all over the world. The thing about New York is, it always has a certain attraction coming back. It's like the atmosphere, it's like the knowledge, you know, everything started around the corner here. And still doing something like a train here is still one of the top aims German writers have. They come over just for doing that, just one train, probably one wall, but that's like the dream of their life, being here and doing it. Lumet, he's definitely one of the most motivated, never tired individuals I've ever met. Can you believe it? Come doing a production with FX after like two years, ooh, with the infamous Lumet. Graffiti, especially like more the graffiti art we're doing is something that really keep, keeps you alive. I mean, you're doing something which is a very positive thing. It brings people together, shows them also a direction to go. I mean, that's not something you waste your life. If I wasn't writing graffiti, I'll tell you straight up, I'd either be, I'd be selling drugs, either probably be in and out of jail, or probably be killed by now. Where I came from, man, this is all we had, man. You know, I didn't have them, them, them G.I. Joes and good toys and all that shit everybody else grew up with. I had to steal my spray paint, man, and go scribble on a fucking wall, man. It's tough to make it from, from the ghetto, from down there at the bottom, man. You know, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I, I suffered drug addiction, all kind of shit, you know? And through my art, I made it, man. I don't have any other hobbies. Graph is my life. It's what I do, I meet people from overseas with it. Uh, it matters to me the way the walls come out. I coordinate this and coordinate that and get down with Seth, Snow, T-Kid, a few other people. We got scene painting here with us today. He's one of the guys I definitely looked up to. I used to wake up in the morning, look out the window and shit, and I used to see like different names, man. The, the Man 550, A1, Tracy 168, Phase 2. That was a long time ago, man. And I said, man, I want to do that, man. You know, I want to put my name on a train. I mean, I remember one time I pulled out a burner, right? I pulled, I pulled it out in the 137th Street layup, uh, on the one train between 137 and 145th. And people looked at my shit roll into the station and they started clapping when that train came in. A whole car that I did, you know, top to bottom style shit, man. I wanted to get up and tell people, yo, man, I did that, but couldn't do that, you know what I'm saying? Because I would've got busted or whatever. But that was a good feeling, man, you know what I'm saying? One day, I was coming from the Bronx and we had a lot of fun and I was on the train. I was coming home by myself this time. And I was taking the four train into the last stop. When I got off the train, I remember the conductor saying, this is the last stop, everybody off. And I got off the train, the doors closed. And I started walking and just something like, yo, turn around. I turned around and looked. And it was like this whole car, man, with Butch and Case. I was like, this shit is it. You know, growing up in New York, you know, you couldn't help but see, you know, the writing on the walls and the trains running all the time. And you wondered, you know, who, who the hell was doing that there? And when you started to see, it was people you went to school with, people around the neighborhood and stuff like that. And they were into it and they were somebody in it. You know, you begin to learn and, and take advantage of what you had around you. And being an artist, you know, I kind of lended myself to that. My boy brought a black book over my house and that was it. He showed me one piece that an older writer from around my way had done. And that was it, that shit just stuck with me, you could say, you know, I'm still doing it now, like 10, 11 years later. Graph used to take every minute of my life. When I was writing Graph, I'll tell you, when I was writing Graph, I doodled and scribbled on anything and everything. While I was on the phone, when I was in school, all I did was practice Graph. Uh, on the way to school, all I did was look at Graph. It was the bomb back in the day to just bomb and have your name all over the place and be known and be spoken about. I was always doing paintings. I was always painting and doing art and stuff. And uh, a, lot, a lot of people I know, graffiti writers, come to art through graffiti as far as doing paintings and stuff like that. I was doing paintings, I was doing drawings and everything. 
Then I went into graffiti because I thought it was really cool. I just, uh, I wondered, you know, who was doing that? Why was it there? There was no point of reference. There was no such thing as writers that I heard of back then.